we have been examining the long run phenomena and long run is a phenomena in which all inputs are variable or they can change and we have this production function where output depends on two inputs labor and capital and in the long run both labor and capital can be changed by the management and then we are also familiar with the total cost and total cost in this case is equal to wages times number of workers which will give us labor cost plus rent times capital which will give us capital cost w stands for wages r stands for rent l is labor and k is capital then we also know how inputs are combined together to produce output and we are familiar with the phenomena that initially what we will have is increasing returns to scale followed by constant returns to scale followed by decreasing returns to scale so we have all this in the background and now what we do is we try to plot total cost against output here on the vertical axis we have long run total cost denoted by ltc as in dollars and on the horizontal axis we have quantity of output denoted by q and based on all that we know we can plot the total cost curve and since we are looking at long run phenomena where we do not have any fixed input that means all costs are going to be variable or all inputs are variable and therefore cost will be variable too so when you produce nothing it will cost you nothing and then the firm tries to figure out what is the lowest possible total cost of producing each level of output and suppose we have this information and we plot those points and join them and what we get is a curve which looks something like this long run total cost and it starts from the origin indicating that all inputs are variable or there is no fixed cost and what you observe here is as you increase output it costs you more to produce output or that is as we increase output long run total cost increases and why does this happen to produce more output we need more workers and more machines and given wages and rent we find as we employ more workers and more capital we have to pay out more and more money as total cost so all these points on the ltc curve represent the most efficient point and that's what the firm has figured out that is what is the lowest possible total cost of producing each unit of output now you also know that if we draw a line from the origin up to a point on the ltc this line from the origin to any point on the ltc the slope of this will give us the long run average cost why because when you produce say 100 units of output and it costs you just as an example $500 what is the average cost of producing 100 units of output it will be 500 which is long run total cost divided by how much output you produce so 500 divided by 100 will give you $5 per unit and that will be the long run average cost so based on ltc we can draw we can draw the long run average cost as well or we can figure out the long run cost as well now suppose i want to find out 
we draw a tangent to the long run total cost at this point and we try to figure out what will be the slope of this tangent to the long run total cost curve and the slope of the tangent to the LTC will equal change represented by triangle of long run total cost divided by change in quantity that's what the slope of this tangent will give us and we know change in cost divided by change in output is marginal cost and since we are looking at long run we'll call this LMC or long run marginal cost so this is how we can derive long run average cost from the long run total cost curve and long run marginal cost from the long run total cost and once again we know what is LTC it is the lowest total cost of producing each level of output uh, uh, output in the most efficient way or at the lowest possible cost so we can figure out LAC and LMC from the LTC or the long run total cost so on the vertical axis we have this in dollars and this will show us either LAC or LMC and on the horizontal axis we have Q which is the quantity of output we know about the relationship between marginal and average and based on that relationship we can draw the long run average cost curve and the long run marginal cost curve now all these are u-shaped and why are they u-shaped we'll get into that a little later but what you find is here LMC is less than LAC and so LAC is declining here LMC is greater than LAC so what you find is LAC is increasing and so LMC intersects the LAC curve at LAC's minimum point minimum of LAC so this is the shape of LMC and LAC both of them are u-shaped and both these the location of these curves is based on the relationship between marginal and average concepts here what I have presented is a stylized version of the LAC curve now remember initially as we increase output what we believe happens is we'll face increasing returns to scale and when we have increasing returns to scale just remember because there's an increase in factor productivity as we produce more and more long run average cost declines so why does long run average cost decline between a and b it's always because of increasing returns to scale or irs and then as we increase output further what you find is the LAC becomes flat and this is happening simply because there is constant total factor productivity in the long run or what we have is constant returns to scale so CRS follows IRS and DRS follows CRS and so here when average cost long run average cost is increasing this must be happening because of decrease decreasing returns to scale all this is happening because of decreasing returns to scale so since we believe in the sequence what I have presented here is a stylized version of the LAC curve the declining portion of LAC curve is simply because of IRS the flat part of LAC is because of CRS and the rising portion of LAC curve is because of DR now the firms are very interested in keeping the cost of production to the lowest possible and there's some relationship between price and average cost of production though the relationship is not exact so if the firm wants to be competitive 
what it is going to do is charge a lower price and they can do it if and only if the average cost are lower and another reason as to why businesses might be interested in keeping average cost of production lower for a given price they can make more and more profits now the location and the shape of LAC depends on the technology available consider a following industry where the firm hits the minimum of LAC at very low levels of output let's call this LAC 1 and and so at this point the firm is at the minimum of LAC but to attain this point the firm has to produce an extremely large level of output and to produce extremely large level of output they the businesses have to invest a lot in larger machines and so on so when you find an industry that hits a minimum at a very high level of output you are likely to find very few competitors in this industry and each of these businesses in this industry must be producing a large quantity of output one example that comes to my mind is look at how many manufacturers we have to produce large commercial aircrafts they are just three Boeing the US manufacturer aerospace a collaboration between UK and France and illusion which is produced by Russia and, and you can also look at car manufacturers there are not many and when so in these industries what you find is you'll have few competitors but each of them will be large-scale firm now compare this to a situation where the firm hits a minimum at a relatively lower level of output and so the amount of investment required to produce lower level of output is not very high relative to what we found under LAC2 and so here what you're likely to find in the second industry what you're likely to find is a larger number of competitors and each of them producing relatively smaller part of the market where do we find this kind of a phenomena LAC2 or the industry which is characterized by an LAC curve hitting the minimum at a low level of output you're likely to find this in the case of businesses producing small consumer items like toothpaste toothbrushes calculators and so on let us go back to the example of large commercial aircraft in 1950s and 60s US was the dominant producer of large commercial aircraft and and by dominant we mean it was producing a very large quantity of output and when it was doing so it had already hit the minimum of LAC in 1960s France and UK decided to set up a collaborative effort called Airbus industry and when they entered the market initially they produced little and when they produced little the average cost of production was very high so if the British and the French or the Airbus industry wanted to sell large commercial aircrafts based on the average cost of production the price would have been much higher for those aircrafts relative to what the US was charging so in order to make Airbus competitive relative to US manufacturers the UK and the French governments decided to subsidize Airbus industry and over time what has happened is as they produced more and more the average cost of production started to fall and as average cost of production started to fall they required less and less of government help to produce large commercial aircrafts so whenever you see an LAC curve like this you can think about barriers to entry caused by the fact that the initially average cost of production will be very high now this completes our discussion of production and cost in the short and long run in subsequent videos we'll look at market structure